Have you ever wondered if you can make a 36 volt solar panel into a 12 volt panel? Let me show you how it can be done. Whether it's advisable or not, I'll leave up to you. The solar panel I chose has an open circuit voltage of 45. It's a standard panel size of 72 cells. This masquerades nicely as a 12 volt panel if I cut that in half as I'll be at about 22 volts, which is on the high end of what you'll see with 12 volt panels in the market. If I had chosen a 60 cell panel, I'd be at 18 to 20 volts open circuit, which puts my max power voltage down near 15. This could work, but would be low when the panel is hot. As the max power voltage drops, the hotter the panel gets. In addition, this one makes it easy with the IP65 junction box, as opposed to the IP68 ones that are potted with silicone or the like. I checked each third of the panel to make sure voltages were consistent and I wasn't wasting time with a dead panel. And the diodes won't be needed, so I removed them all to be out of the way and marked positive and negative within the junction box in case I get confused later. At the other end of the panel here, I needed to expose the bus bar that connects the first half of the panel with the second half. We'll then cut this and bend the tabs up so we can solder it here in a second. I think you could get at it effectively without a grinder, but it was available and it was 100 degrees in the warehouse, so I just went to town. Thankfully, there isn't a solar cell behind this bus bar, so not much to damage here other than doing the unthinkable and breaking the seal, which is the back sheet. This is a big no-no with solar panels, as water penetration is a huge killer of solar panels. We'll seal it back up later as best we can. I took the bus bar down beyond its tinned coating, so I knew it was exposed beyond the back sheet. I was then able to peel the bus bar up. The copper was actually much thicker than I was expecting. I suppose it's designed to sport 15 amps at fairly high temperatures, so it makes sense to be fairly heavy. A disposable blade might have been a better choice here instead of signing my Leatherman up to be sharpened later, but oh well. I'm checking voltages to make sure I'm on track. Notice I'm checking between the right connector of the junction box to the right side of the tab I just exposed. I get voltage loss cut like I was expecting and carry on. I'm just going to tin these wires I salvaged off other panels, keeping things simple by using MC4 for paralleling the two portions of the panels. This makes it easy to add fuses, uh, keeping everything safe and modular. I've seen some other videos where they cut the bus bars at the top of the panel instead of this one at the bottom. They put the panel into thirds instead of in half. The great thing about doing it this way is the max voltage the VOC would be 15. You don't even need a charge controller as your panel really won't be able to overcharge the battery unless it's super cold out and the battery's topped off. When the VOC climbs due to temperature drop. The disadvantage with that method though is the max power voltage is about 12 and that's max power in ideal conditions. When it's hot out, max power is even lower. Once the battery is at nominal voltage, the current into the battery will taper off quickly as it charges, so you won't get much out of the solar panel. That's the trade-off. Now, as I was talking about, I'm using standard MC4 connectors, so I grabbed a two to one branch connector and a couple of 15 amp inline fuses. I used fuses since the label on this panel said it can handle up to 15 amps, and with it in parallel with itself, the short circuit current is just a hair over that. I realize you could certainly hardwire these instead of using MC4. If you do that, be careful with what fuses you use. I've had bad experiences with the inline blade fuse holders one can acquire from Amazon. They tend to melt at well below the current they are rated for. So if you're planning on 8 amps per side of the panel, get some 10 gauge fuse holders so the Chinesium doesn't hamper your style. With it paralleled up, I'm just measuring for open circuit voltage to make sure nothing's connected backwards. Uh, the panel is rated at 300 watts. We can see with my handy solar panel tester, I get 274 watts with both portions of the panel. Max power is 15 and a half. Considering a 12 volt battery maxed out at 14.6, that seems perfect and right in line with commercially available 12 volt panels. I also tested just one side of the panel. You can see the max power voltage and VOC are about the same and current is half, just what we expected. You might ask if it's worth doing this to a solar panel. I think if the requirements call for it, then go for it. Sometimes you need something that is simple, uncomplicated, and bulletproof. An advantage 
taking the voltage down like this is less electronics involved. One could easily grab a $100 MPPT charge controller and get just as much out of the panel stock as opposed to taking the time to modify it, which is what I would do 99% of the time. If I'm ever dropped into one of those reality TV shows where I'm stuck in a warehouse in an apocalyptic scenario, better believe I'm going to be in there with a solder guard modifying panels. Might have to work out how to use direct solar power to solder with, though. Hmm.